welcome to my mompreneur studio. I'm Anissa Crespo, and on this episode of She Swaps, I'm talking to Anna Elias, and she is an author and a screenwriter. So welcome, Anna. How are you today? I am great. Ben, happy to be here. Thank you so much. Absolutely. So I'm excited to hear some of your story. I had a chance to meet you at um, the NABO event a couple of weeks ago, and um I, I was excited to get to know you more. So um, tell us who is Anna and tell us about some of your projects, some of your books and the things that you've done. Oh, well, thank you. And um, yeah, that was a really fun event, the NABO event. I really enjoyed meeting uh, you and and just so many wonderful women in business. Um, as for me, so my story um, is that I started, I, I graduated University of Florida uh, back in the day. We will not discuss dates there. No need to date yourself. Um, no, 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 no details <laughs> like that. But uh, I probably will date myself anyway. But um, <laughs> after after I graduated, I, I knew I wanted to be in, in movie production and nobody in my family had ever done that. In fact, um, no women in my family had been to college. So I was the first to do that. And then I wanted to, you know, go make movies and television. And my, my, you know, mom and dad were like, what is that? You know, what does that even mean? Um, so anyway, I moved to Miami and I pursued that dream and it landed me through a friend of a friend onto Miami Vice, where I was really, I was trying so hard to get on that show, I, even as a PA coffee, you know, carrier, whatever. And a friend of mine knew an associate producer and she's like, well, how would you like to be Don Johnson's assistant? Because I understand he needs one that they're, you know, his last one left, they're hiring. So I'm like, yeah, absolutely. And you learn to say yes and then go figure it out. That was a very yes. important skill thing to learn. So um, anyway, I interviewed and I met with Don and he offered me the job. So, um, so I took that and I ended up being on Miami Vice the final season. So it was a really great time to be part of his world and, and part of the show and um, kind of had the keys of the kingdom in Miami, which is something that I, I never would have known otherwise. So I did that. And then um, he moved back to LA when the show ended and I stayed because my my father had cancer at the time and I didn't want to move that far away. So so Don had offered, but I, I stayed uh, back in Florida. And so I continued on movie work and I ended up in Georgia where I got onto another TV show called In the Heat of the Night with Carol O'Connor and Howard Rollins. And I went to, uh, to, I was a location assistant manager, manager. And basically what that means is anything that you see on screen, my department finds and secures and then makes it ready for filming and then cleans up when it's all done. So, so we are the go between the community and the film company and between the creative and the pragmatic elements um, of bringing a movie to life. And so I just, I was, I was living the dream. You know, I, I even my parents were like, Oh, oh, I think I get that. <laughs> so that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, they were like, I no, understand now, like, where did this come from? And that was the question I couldn't answer. So I think, and I'm sure you face that too, like, coming up with ideas, like, where do they come from? Why, why do we get these dreams? I, I don't know. But I think we know to follow them. Always, and, um, always. Where they lead. So interestingly enough, um, not only did I, you know, follow my dreams professionally, but the man that I worked for on In the Heat of the Night eventually became the man I married. So that was like bonus. Um, so anyway, yeah, we went on to uh, to do just a bunch of movies together. He he and I, as a locations team, we did a lot of John Grisham movies. We did Practical Magic with Sandra Bullock and Nicole Kidman. We did um, <clears throat> Twelve Monkeys with Bruce Willis and Brad Pitt. I think my favorite was A Time to Kill with Sandra Bullock and Matthew McConaughey and Sam Jackson. That was just a movie. Love that movie for so many, many reasons. But yes, um, and we'll save that story for another time. But it literally changed the town where we filmed. And, and that I'm was sure. I can imagine. Powerful. powerful. So, yeah. So that's kind of my story. Um, so so we did that. And then when Scott and I decided to get married and, and settle, we chose Florida because we had family here and we didn't really need to be in LA. Um, so we worked here and I sort of started screenwriting because that was really my love, the storytelling piece of it. And I loved writing. So I kind of put myself through that, to writing school and um, wrote a bunch of stuff, independent films, paid assignments, you know, whatever spec scripts. So um, I've been doing that for a number of years. And then one day I was, I was out to work on a script and I just got the uh I just kind of got this idea why well, it sort of had been circling but it finally came 
to me and it was so comprehensive that I knew it had to be a book. And I had never written a book, but again, you follow your dreams, right? And it's like, okay, say yes, figure it out. So I did. And uh, it became my Vessels book series. So it's a trilogy, took several years, uh, not easy and not easy going from script writing to book writing because they're very different creatures. But um, but I really enjoyed the process, and now I've, I'm adapting it for television. I'm I'm pitching it uh, for that, and I've started a new book series. So it's kind of a, yeah, I like this thing, you know. I I, I like I like this way of storytelling as well. So that kind of brings me up to where we are uh, right now. That is so amazing. You have lived quite an incredible life and you still have so much more to do. I, I'm excited to see where it's going to go and um, you'll have to uh, keep me posted on all that. So so tell us, um, what's the name of the series? How can we find it? Uh, what are the names of the latest books that just came out in it? Well, as it happens, <laughs> I have them handy. The I best love one. someone who's prepared. <laughs> I'm prepared. Well, I just happened to be here on my shelf. Um, so The Vessels was the first one and it came out through a publisher and it actually came out right in the middle of COVID. So, you know, we didn't get a lot of traction with that because I couldn't do book signings and things. But, um, and then that, it was kind of a boutique publisher and they were not really 100% sure when they could do the other two books. So I did those on my own and I have the coin and the return. So they're all on Amazon, Barnes and Noble. They're all online. Uh, you can either look them up by name or Anna M. Elias will get you there. I have an author's page. You can find that. But yeah, that's that's where they are. And then my new one is called Rebirth. And that one, I'm, I wrote it as a, as a TV pilot and I'm now kind of adapting it sideways into novel form. So I'll have it, I'll have it as both really. But um, the, the Vessel series is like a, contemporary sci-fi with supernatural components. This idea that this very broken, diverse group of people become human hosts for spirits that come back. And the idea is the spirits wanna right some kind of wrong, right? They, they, they wanna, there's forgiveness, there's love, there's secrets, there's redemption. And the vessels are the means to that end, anywhere in the world that the spirit needs to go. And the spirits choose. So they typically choose a vessel not just to be a human host, but because there's something in that vessel that they also need, you know, for, for multiple reasons. But as with all good fiction, not every journey goes as planned and not every spirit seeks redemption and not every vessel survives, um, especially when the spirit of a serial killer comes back and goes rogue and becomes like the, the villain of the series, so well, to speak. Now, now you're speaking my husband's language, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> That sounds super interesting. I'm really excited to read that. Um, you know, it's so funny. I heard you, you know, just saying like, you say yes, and then you figure it out. And I am such an advocate of that. I mean, <laughs> I, I I do, I get these like spiritual awakenings or, or like these things just come to me mostly usually at like 2am when I'm, when I should be sleeping. <laughs> And, and I'm like, I have to do this. Or, you know, a couple of years ago, I was like, uh, I woke up and I was like, I'm going to move to Florida. I had no <laughs> idea how I was going to move me, my husband and my small twins. Um, they were babies at the time to wow. uh, a whole other state a thousand miles away. But I knew I was going to do it. And I figured it out. And we're very resilient as women like that. Yeah. Um, so you have a lot of exciting stuff going on. I'm super excited to, um, read some of the pieces that you've already written, some of the stuff that you're working on, the screenplays, hopefully the upcoming TV shows and series, like this is exciting stuff. So I am, uh, very grateful that, uh, we connected and I, and I stopped at your table. I'm so glad I did. Um, and I, I just looked forward to more. And I hope, you know, you'll be coming back on to, to talk about some more of your stuff going on. Well, me too. And, and for, for those who know me and know I'm a big, big believer in dreams. Um, I want to ask you, um, at the same time, how did you form, is it mom, mom, mompreneur studios? Is that right? Like not yeah. entrepreneur, but mompreneur studio. Yeah. So mompreneur, it's kind of like people are always like, what's a mompreneur? Is that some made up word? And it's like, yes and no. Um, so we, we did, we crafted this word. It's for 
for moms who have children, but that's not all they are. They're entrepreneurs. They have dreams. They're going to follow their dreams and they're going to have a work-life balance when they do it. So I um, had another one of my spiritual awakenings, I don't know, about six months ago. And I woke up one day and I was like, I have to help 1000 moms become mompreneurs <laughs> by the year 2030. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it. And I've started doing it. And a lot of people that I'm working with are super grateful that I am doing it. And I just, um, you know, my mission and, and passion is to help women. So that's what I'm doing. And that's what I'm going to continue to do. And, uh, and that's where I'm at. And I know you're on Facebook. I obviously have connected with you that way as well. So um, my mompreneur studio, I think you call it right. That's a, yeah. a Facebook page. So yeah, I just I just want to say that because anybody who's watching this on my uh, social media, you know, please go check it out because I think it's I think it's wonderful when whatever your passion is. In my case, it's writing, storytelling. That's just who I am. But what you're doing or what anyone chooses to do, I, and I saw a lot of this with Nabo, is whatever that dream is. Typically, it's 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 in the pursuit of helping somebody else. It's in the pursuit of elevating the world in your corner in some way. Right. And I think that's that's the most important thing is is living your dream, not just for yourself, but because you're going to be in community with others who are going to benefit from that dream. So whether they go see a movie I worked on or they read a book I wrote, I really want that when they leave or they close that cover that they're inspired in some way to, you know, maybe pick, you know, find find something in their life that might need a little attention, a, a wrong that they need to write or something like that and and think about fixing that. And then in your case, it's, it's a wonderful way to, to elevate and uplift women who may not know what to do or may not know how to start or may not know how to make connections and, but they've got so much to offer. So anyway, I'm, I'm happy with what you're doing. And I, I would love for um, anyone watching this to, to go check that out. Thank you. I appreciate that. And yeah, I mean, it's so true. I mean, number one, we need our community and we need to be um, now more than ever building each other up because, yeah. uh, we're, you know, women by nature tend to be like catty and always, you know, breaking each other down. And it's just so unnecessary. We're such a force when we come together and we put our brilliant minds together to do things. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I'm all about. I'm all about women empowerment. I'm actually working on a, a project called Empower Her. Um, as an author, I'm, um, I actually am already technically a published author. And in 2020, I published a, I self-published a um, children's book for my twins on Amazon. So um, I think I sold like maybe a grand total of 10 copies and eight of those customers were my family. So <laughs> <laughs> it still counts. It, it's, it counts. counts. I'm, I'm right. a published author, but no, <laughs> You're a published I, author. I am. I, I'm working on some other books. Uh, pretty big book projects right now. So I feel it. And, and that's also something very notable to share is that, you know, it's hard work to be an author. A lot of people think like, oh, anybody can be an author. And while that may be true, um, it, it takes a lot of dedication and, and self-discovery and just, um, you know, I'm passionate about it. So it's something I enjoy. But the thing about, you know, selling books, if it's something you want to do, like you actually want to sell copies of your books and get it out there into the world, marketing is a whole nother animal. I mean, right. you know, if you don't have the proper marketing, then, you know, you might sell as many copies as I did. So yeah. <laughs> no, that's, that's very true. Marketing is especially, you know, for, I, I, I'm a hybrid author. So my first book had a publisher who did a lot of that um, for me and taught me, but the second two books are mine. And, and yeah, it's when you're a professional author and that is what you seek to be, it's very different because if I don't sell books, I don't make a living. Right. So yes, I need to know how to do that, or I need to promote that, or I need to get events and do that because, and again, it's not about making the money. It's about sharing the story. Absolutely. But if that's what I do for a living, then how is that different than going to work every day and earning my paycheck, right? It's what, it's my gift. It's what I do. It's how I use it. So yeah, the marketing thing is, is real. <laughs> <laughs> it's very true. <laughs> Anna, I can't thank you enough for taking the time with me today. And um, I look forward to staying connected and um, doing this a little bit more often because I think you've got some really great stuff going on. Well, same, same uh, right back at you. And I look forward to sharing as well. Amazing. Thank you. All right. Bye.